Y ahí sería Mike Chapin también, el hermano Richard. Oh. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what uh, if he comes in. But <clears throat> so tonight's study is going to be well. Tonight's title, right? <clears throat> it's going to be obey God and be blessed. <clears throat> Why choose the path of pain and not the path of blessing? Mm -hmm. Not the path of blessings. You know, I was looking for my title and I was like. But the Lord gave it to me this morning. <laughs> I go, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's a good title. <laughs> Obey God and be blessed. <clears throat> Why choose the path of pain and not the path of blessings? Um, we'll get a, li a little bit more into that as we go into uh, Psalm 81. Psalm 81 for tonight. Uh, we'll be in Psalm 81. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll introduce the ministry. And we'll have Hermano Randy read the um, introduction. Hermano Adolfo, he'll pray us in. So let me introduce the ministry. I uh, want to welcome each and every one of you that have been following along with us in the book of Psalms. <clears throat> like I said earlier, we're going to be in the book of Psalm 81 for tonight. Um, the... Uh, The uh, scripture for, for the tabernacle is Revelation 21.3. And it reads, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people. God himself shall be with them and be their God. Right? Revelation 21.3 once again. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people. God himself shall be with them and be their God. The tabernacle that Moses was told to set up while wandering in the wilderness represented the dwelling place of God in this earth. But this tabernacle of God is the reality of his presence. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. The essence of God's desire and man's purpose. God's desire is to live in close fellowship with man. Man's purpose is to be a people and to God. Oh, the next scripture we have is Psalm 51, right? Psalm 51 is a psalm of repentance from King David. Here we see David, God's chosen king, sin by having relations with another man's wife, Bathsheba. But God has something to say about David's abuse and power, right? Because he was a king. And he sent a prophet Nathan to call David out. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, Nathan uses a story to illustrate the seriousness of David's sin and its effective in calling David to repentance. There's still repercussions from his sin, but because Nathan spoke the truth, <clears throat> David repented and avoided bringing further punishment, punishment on Israel. So he wrote Psalm 51, 10 through 12 reads, Create in me, clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with the willing spirit. Right after the sin with Bathsheba, he says, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Oh, God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And restore to me the joy of your salvation. Lord, give that back to me. The joy of your salvation and sustain me with the willing spirit. Right. May the Lord sustain you. May the Lord sustain me with that. Throughout the week with that what? With that willing spirit, right? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. weak. The flesh is weak. Um, next we have is, we have, we have the uh, Acts chapter 16, right? We have the Philippian jailer. It was chained up with Paul and Silas. <clears throat> they were preaching in the calle in the street when they were told not to. And they were thrown into prison. They had this Philippian jailer chained up to him. God sent an angel to <clears throat> shake up the prison. These chains were broken. These men were set free. That's right. To these men, to Paul and Silas, and said, here in Acts 16.30, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Right? The Philippian jailer once again, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Right? And Paul and Silas responded in verse 31, and said, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. 
Notice that. Man, just believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. Is any among you afflicted due to alcohol, to depression, anger, divorce, drug abuse, death of a loved one, mixed marriages, abandonment? Know that God loves you and awaits for you to respond and to respond to the call, right? God says, hey, I have a calling in your life, right? Experiencing God's call may be a process, but answering his call requires a definite decision, mm -hmm. right? A delayed obedience is disobedience. A delayed obedience is disobedience but how do i know what my spiritual calling is well you well you know it by what comes naturally to you and by what god blesses right how do i know what my spiritual calling is well i i know it you know it by what comes naturally to you and by what god blesses um your ministry is found where you've been broken and your testimony is found where you've been restored, right? Your test, your ministry is found where you've been broken, and your testimony is found where you've been restored. And then that's the tabernacle meeting out from above. Uh, that's who we are, and that's what we're about, amen. Uh, we're going to move forward with the hermano Adolfo. He's going to do us a favor to uh, pray us in for tonight. Amen. Hey, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus to give you thanks and praises for your loving kindness and for your mercies. And we just thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We adore you, Lord. We lift up our lives before you. We just thank you for the precious morning that you gave us earlier. Thank you for the morning. Thank you for the noon, the afternoon, the evening, and the night that is going down right now, Father. And I just uh, lift up this uh, two hours of the rest of this day of the 18th month, 18th, 18th day of July. We just uh, lift it up before you, praying the miracles may take place within this uh, next two hours. I pray that you will speak through Pastor Junior's mouth and heart and uh, that you will anoint him, Lord. I pray that you will speak through uh, my brothers and that you will bless everything that it is said tonight. I pray especially that you will comfort uh, Robert's uh, uh, mom who lost her husband, Lord. I pray that you will comfort her and give her peace, that peace that only you yes, can give. Yes. Bless her, bless her abundantly and uh, have mercy, Lord. Have mercy and uh, bless Robert by being there with his mom. I just uh, thank you and I lift up God's uh, before you, praying for healing. If it pleases you, Lord, we know that there is a purpose why you kept him alive so far up, up until today. Bless him in the name of Jesus and show him what is it that you want from him. I just thank you and I praise you and I lift up this study before you. And I just lift up anybody who's going to watch it later around. The blessings might be, might be coming their way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Gracias, hermano. Okay. We're going to move forward with the hermano Randy. He's going to read the introduction for tonight. <clears throat> okay. Church of the Most High God, we are moving forward in the book of Psalms and moving forward to our next chapter in which is chapter 81 for tonight. And the title of Junior's message is obey God and be blessed. Why choose the path of pain and not the path of blessings? The Hebrew scholars titled it to the chief musicians on an instrument of Goth, a psalm of Asaph. In the King James Version, it's to the chief musicians upon Git Tith, a psalm of Asaph. What we learn here is that Git Tith is a musical instrument that was used in Goth. Psalm 81 arises out of the psalmist Asaph exhorting the Old Testament church 
to come together as a nation to this annual feast and the Feast of Tabernacles. It was a time to praise the Most High and to remember his faithfulness and caring during their time in the wilderness. But the Lord here is not pleased with many of the people, for many have forgotten the Lord's faithfulness and had disobeyed his commands and instructions. Take note here on verse 10 and 11 that reads, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth and I will fill it. But my people would not heed my voice and Israel would have none of me. The psalmist Asaph word of exhortation is an encouragement to follow his ways and receive deliverance. Verses 13, oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. Psalm 81, obey God and be blessed. Why choose the path of pain and not the path of blessings? See you tonight. Amen. Sounds like something good for us. <laughs> let's, get in, let's get into it, Junior. I know, but, but if you really think about that, I mean, here in this chapter, uh, you know, it begins with with the with with a uh, with the with two, it's a shop for joy, right? Yeah, it's, it, it's to it's to praise the most high. Mm. <clears throat> you know, it's a call uh -huh. to praise the most high. Yeah, uh, but I was looking at one of one of our when we were in the other chapters. In the Psalms, I already have one. I already have a title like that, a call to praise the most high <laughs> God. And I go, okay, so I can't use that one because I already have one. We already have one on that subject. <laughs> um, pero that's why I was kept searching. I kept searching, keep looking, say, Lord, you know, what do we have here? What, what are we talking about? Um, but it's also, a, it's also a call to remember what God has done. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You know, we remember what the Lord did. And what God has done in your life, what God has done in my life, yeah, and bring us to repentance. Mm -hmm. You know, because I remember that the Lord was there for me. You know, I was thinking about that. I go, what do I remember? What's to remember? You know, just like the Lord, like the Asaph is using, the Lord is using Asaph for the children of Israel to remember this, to remember when I was there for you, to remember when you called and I answered you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have a, a verse 7, right? <clears throat> I mean, take note of verse 7. Yeah. I'm getting out of our introduction, but I'll go back to our introduction. But <laughs> look at verse 7. What what is what is verse 7 show us there? Take a read on that, Hermano Dorfo. Yes. You call in trouble, and I rescue you. I answer you in a hiding place or ponder. I prove you all the waters of Meribah. At the waters of Meribah. Right. If you remember what happened there, the children of Israel were complaining. <clears throat> they're murmuring and complaining because they're, you took us out for this. You know, and now we're like, now we're thirsty. But eso dice que God, that's why it says that I, the Lord says that I tested, I tested you at the waters of Meribah. At the, you know, that's that's where God told Moses to speak to the speak to the rock, and he smit the rock instead of speaking to the rock. And that was at Meribeth, you know. But the Lord says, "I test when you know the Lord tested them también." But you know they were testing that. <laughs> okay, pues, David, you gave us the quail, whatever. you know, for me, right? And then they wanted, you know, they wanted the Bread to eat, and God gave him what? Man, until you said that, right? <clears throat> so, I mean, God gave him man. God gave him quail. Fine, eat, and they're nice. again. Hey, we're thirsty. Okay, whatever. And you know, they were testing God. Yes. But God says, "Hey, I was testing you. <laughs> mm -hmm. You were putting God to the test here." I mean, 
But you know, verse seven, como dijo Adolfo right now, it says, you called, you called in trouble and I delivered you. You know, that takes us to eat to the book of Exodus. <clears throat> when, when the Lord delivered the children of Israel. Well, here, take it away. Here, you can have it then. I don't need napkin. You see that? Why are you being this way? I don't know why you need this whole thing for. You took him out of... I, you called in, in the time of trouble and I delivered you. Look at this right here. So, it's a call to remember. I mean, if we think about it, I mean, what did, what did God deliver you? What did God deli you know, what has God delivered you from? <clears throat> you know, that if we remember what God has done, it should bring us, it should bring us to repentance. It's a call to remember. But it's what he said, Um, but you know, like I said, like I wrote my introduction, it's a call, it's a call, it's an exhortation. It's an exhortation. <clears throat> the psalmist Asaph word of exhortation is an encouragement to follow his ways and receive deliverance. You know, because God gives us a choice. Right? He, he's the God of second chances, right? <laughs> and that's why I got my title. It says, obey God and be blessed. Why choose the path of pain and not the path of blessings? Mm -hmm. You know, I got it out of 10 and 11, verses 10 and 11. Right, ready once again, Adolfo? Yes. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people did not listen to my voice, and Israel did not obey me. So they were rebels. They are rebels. Mm -hmm. I mean, but think about it. Look at all, everything that God did for them. And they still rebuild against the most high. You know, that's why it's a word of exhortation to follow his ways and receive deliverance. It's a simple message. I mean, Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, if, if you obey me, I'll bless you. It gives you a choice. If you disobey me, pues, I'll curse you. It's a blessing, but it, it gives you a choice. You know, that's why it says, that's why I titled it. <laughs> it says, obey God and be blessed. Why choose the path of pain and not the path of blessings? And like you said right now, Adolfo, <laughs> son rebeldes, you know, they, they rebel yes. against the Most High. You know, why rebel against the Most High? How do we rebel against the Most High? You know, when we choose to do things our way. Um. I think it also happens like, um, you know, we, it's in our nature. It's in our nature to, to rebel against, against the Lord. And, um, you know, that's why, uh, Paul in Galatians, he says, walk in the spirit that you may not fulfill the lust or the desires of the flesh. Um, if we walk in the spirit, you know, we, we won't be fulfilling those lusts, those desires. And he explains, you know, he explains, you know, what it is. And it's all disobedience to, to God. Um, you know, the, the law of God, you know, when God gave, gave Moses, a the law to give to the Israelites. Um, what he wanted was a he wanted a confession. He that's what he wanted was he wanted a confession from them. It was for them to realize their need for God, their need for a savior. But instead, they thought that they were being accepted by God by trying to keep the commandments, and that's why. It, you know, and you have Christians today too that'll say that they'll be, oh yeah, but you have to obey the 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 law. And Paul says no. Paul 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 makes a distinction between that, and there's a difference between the Old Testament law 
that applied to the Jews and the new law that's in Christ. Paul calls it the royal law, the law of the spirit. And the command of God now in, in the New Testament under the new covenant, it, there's a difference. There's a big difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. The old covenant was based on works. It was a covenant between God and the nation of Israel. God kept his end. The nation of Israel failed to. Every single one from the least to the greatest, including the prophets. Um, and so in the New Testament, God swore upon himself he, he, he the 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 new covenant was made with Christ that's why he made it with Christ because Christ would fulfill the the law that God required and he would be obedient unto the point of death and his obedience would be imputed unto us as righteousness that's you know, that's that's the new covenant. And in him, we trust in Christ for salvation. We trust in his, his finished work in this world, his life, death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. We trust in him 100% for salvation and not in our own works. And that's why Paul said, you know, he who seeks to be justified, you know, according to the law, will by no means be justified. Do you not know that the law is a curse? And, you know, he says that in Galatians chapter 3. You know, he says, you know, when, when you look at, you, you were talking right now, Pastor Junior, about, you know, how... God was telling them to, to obey and how, you know, God is a God of second chances. When you look at the nation of Israel, God was not just a, a God of second chances. He's, he's so long suffering and so merciful that for generations and generations, he extended his arms wide open he says in in matthew chapter 23 he says oh jerusalem jerusalem you who stone and kill the prophets he says how long you know he says how long have i had my you know arms stretched out you know and 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 wish to gather you like a like, like a hen gathers its it's, it's chicks, it's little chickens. He says, but you would not come. You know, you think about it just from the book, from the last book in the Old Testament to the book of Matthew, it's 400 years. 400 years. And think about how many years it's from the time that God gave the law all the way up to the coming of Christ. You have thousands of years. And yet God was still, and even till today, he still extends mercy to the Jews. They, they can come in, but they must repent. And repent of what? They must repent of unbelief. When, when Jesus told them to repent, he told them to, that, that's what he wanted them to repent from, their unbelief, because they would not accept him as Messiah. That's why he says, in, 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 that's why uh, John writes in his gospel, he says, he came to his own and his own received him not. But mm -hmm. as to many as have received him, to them he has given them the right and the power to be called children of God. And these are not born according to the flesh, 
they're not born of the will of the flesh, but of the will of God. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's interesting that, you know, how long suffering God is, you know, with, with humanity itself. Like even right now, you know, I think it was, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about, you know, just everything that's going on in the world today and here, you know, to some of us, it's new. Um, you know, when you read history, you find out that there was time periods that were far worse than what we're living in right now. Um, but to us, it's new. So, so we get kind of spooked out or, or, or we marvel and we, we think it's the end and perhaps it is, perhaps it isn't. But one thing we know for sure that, you know, there's things that are new to us, you know, like all these people coming out of the closet and claiming, you know, this and that and so forth. And, um, you know, but what do we see there? We see that, you know, God is long suffering. You know, he, he, he's, he's not willing that any shall perish, but that all would come to repentance, you know, and, and, um, you know, to me, it just, you know, it, it, it helps me meditate upon my life and realize, man, you know, God is so long suffering. He is so good and how undeserving we are of his, of his loving kindness, his grace, you know, his, yeah, see. his forgiveness. But yeah, go go ahead, Pastor. Yeah, no, that's good. <clears throat> that's good what you what you thought there. Um, and and right here in this chapter, you know, like I said, it's a call to remember. A call to remember what God has done. <clears throat> it's a call to worship. Um, and you know, <clears throat> going back to my title, <laughs> right? <laughs> Obey God and be blessed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I choose the path of pain and not the path of blessings. And like Lalo quoted Galatians 5 16, right? <laughs> I mean, walk in the spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of your flesh, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, it is true, you know, the children of Israel refused to and just like we you know we read psalm 80 right because of because of their apostasy they're turning to 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 other gods other idols but that's why this psalm right here it says in this psalm it says um in verse nine in verse nine he quotes and he tells them, "Okay, because now you're in. Now you're. Now you're in. Now you're in the promised land. <clears throat> There's no need to have other gods before you, you know. And that's quoting the the Ten Commandments, right? Which says, when you go into the land, <clears throat> do not worship the gods of the Amorites, of the Hittites, you know. To you know, when you go into the land, right?" But that's what this uh, that's that's what the psalmist Asaph is referring to here, in verse nine of Psalm eighty one. Uh, uh, take take verse nine, big ready. Psalm eighty one. There shall be no for foreign god among you, nor shall your worship, nor shall you worship any foreign god. Right in verse ten. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. Notice that. In other words, remember when I fed you with manna, with quail? You know, that's why it's called, it's called a, a call to remember. Mm -hmm. and, but also too, you know, I mean, he's like, okay, because you're in this land now, man. You know, what's up? <laughs> there's no, there's, there, there shall be no foreign God among you. 
right? Like Big Red, he just read, it says, nor shall, in, nor shall you worship any foreign God. And then verse one says, you know, sing out loud to God our strength, make a joyful shout to the to the God of Jacob. <clears throat> the God of Jacob is another name for Israel. Mm -hmm. um, the um, but verse two, verse two, it talks about the instrument. <clears throat> you know, when you when we worship, you know, that's why instruments are, are to be used in worship. Because it's there to uh, the uh, the instruments are to raise songs of joy. Yeah. <clears throat> to raise songs of joy. That's why you have instruments to raise the songs of joy. Um. But you know the first uh, the first three the first three verses of Psalm eighty one. It, it's it's a. Uh, it's como se dice, it's, it's, it's referring to the Feast of, of Tabernacles because there was three feasts that were taking place. And one of them was the Feast of Tabernacles. In the Feast of Tabernacles, <clears throat> it begins with a call to worship. You know, once again, it's a call for people to, to gather and to praise God. But what becomes clear as the psalm continues, is that God is not pleased with many many of the people, many of the people, because many have forgotten His faithfulness and and disobeyed His commands. You know, God wanted the God wanted the nation to unite. You know, when they made these feasts, um, they were to come together to these feasts. Um. The um, but we can read about it, and I say I say we go into the uh, to the Feast of Tabernacles, <clears throat> which is the story of this of the beginning of this psalm. This is where the psalmist Asaph has taken us to. Um, but that's the uh, that's Deuteronomy chapter sixteen, and it's verses uh, thirteen to seven. 17, I believe, in reference to the to the to the feast of uh, tabernacles. Psalm 81 was written with the feast of tabernacles in mind. So, the psalmist Asaph is remembering the feast of tabernacles. <clears throat> the um, so God appointed his people to come together. One such time for the nation of Israel was the Feast of Tabernacle. Tabernacles, other translation might say booths, a booth. It was an annual feast when the people would praise God and remember his faithfulness and care and care for them during their time in the wilderness. Uh, but let's let's take a read on that. Uh, Deuteronomy. 16 verse 13 or uh yeah start with 13 and i believe end it end at uh, 17 yeah are you there yeah ver, you shall observe the feast of tabernacles seven days when you have gathered from your threshing floor and from your wine press and you shall rejoice in your feast, you and your son and your daughter, your male servant and your female servant, and the Levite, the stranger and the fatherless, and the widow who are within your gates. Seven days you shall keep a sacred feast to your Lord, your God, in the place which the Lord chooses because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and in all your work of your hands so that you surely rejoice. Verse 16. Um, go ahead, take a, a 16 and 17. 
Okay, uh, three times in a year, all you males shall appear before the Lord your God in the place which he chooses. All the feasts of the unleavened bread and all the feasts of the weeks of the, of the feasts of boots, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty handed. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which has given you. I noticed that, that when you when you appear to these feasts, you weren't to come you weren't to come empty handed. <laughs> In other words, whatever the whatever the Lord has blessed you with, rather it's rather it's what you grew or you know whatever the Lord blessed you with, you were to come forth and and give <clears throat> to this feast. Now, mind you, this feast was for what? For seven days? Could you imagine what great feast it was? Mm -hmm. but, but notice verse 17, right? Como Adolfo read. It says, every man shall give as he is able, according to what? The blessings of the Lord. Which he has given you, right? Notice that. In other words, um, he wants he wants he wants them to bless the people because God has blessed them, right? Yeah. In other words, be a blessing. <clears throat> Pray to be blessed so you can be a blessing, right? <laughs> right. Be a blessing like God is a blessing to you. You know. Right. That every man shall give as he is able. I mean, if you're not able, plus, you know. But notice, you know, that's my New King James, right? My New King James says, every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessings of the Lord, your God, which he has given. You know, this feast was a feast of, um, como dijo? I was reading one of my notes. It said the, the feast of grapes, where they would make wine. Um. Because there were three feasts that were taking place. Mm -hmm. This feast was a feast of wine. The um, the other two feasts were to make uh, to make bread. <clears throat> um, it's on my notes. Where I had my notes on that one. <laughs> the unleavened bread. Yeah, it was it was too it was a feast of bread. But but anyway, you know, it's what the Lord blessed you with where you were to bring forth. You know, like we're reading right now, right? This is a feast of tabernacles. You know, como Adolfo said right now, feast of booths. It's a feast of booths because when God when they were going through the 40 years or the, in the wilderness, <clears throat> they lived in, in booths. And, and, they, and what they did in these Feast of Tabernacles, they would live in these booths to remind themselves of how God provided for them these 40 years in the wilderness. You know, that's why Psalm 81 is, is a psalm of, of remembrance, a call to remember. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's to um, verse 15, right? Deuteronomy 16, it says, seven days you shall keep, you shall keep a sacred feast to the Lord your God in the place which the Lord chooses, because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce and in all your work and, all, and in all the work of your hands, so that you surely rejoice. That's why Psalm 81 says it's a call to rejoice. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's a reference to the to the sounding of the shofar tambien. <laughs> the shouting, shouting of the trumpet. You know, once we read it, we'll, we'll find, well, all this is going to connect, right? <laughs> but, you know, verse 13, like Big Randy just read, you know, it says, you shall observe these feasts of tabernacles seven days. When you have gathered from your, from your threshing floor, and from your wine press. 
because <laughs> the Feast of Tabernacles was was a feast of, of gathering grapes, which they would make wine from. And verse 14 says, and you shall rejoice in your feast and your son and your daughter, your male servant and your male servant and your female servant and the Levite and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow who are within your gates. Seven days you shall keep the, sa the sacred feast To the Lord your God in the place which the Lord chooses. So this is so this is a reference to Psalm 81, you know, referencing uh, the tabernacle, the feast of tabernacles. You know, when I was reading Psalm, when I was reading this 17, <clears throat> you know, and we could talk about it as, as, as a tithing, you know. You know, tithing doesn't mean that God needs your money. It's putting God, it's putting God first in your life. And that's what's happening here. <clears throat> you know, God wants you to give yourself to him completely. And in Psalm 81, the Lord's saying, hey, I want all of you. Mm -hmm. You know, when you give back to the Lord right here, you're giving yourself back to him. I mean, think about the blessings that God has blessed you with. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, anyway, that, that's where I think that verse right there speaks volume. <laughs> you know, so that's the Feast of Tabernacles. That's what uh, I wanted to bring you guys with. Um, but I guess we could read Psalm 81 and then I'll kind of like uh, share a few more things that, uh, that the Lord might have for us because Psalm 81 is a call a call to worship and a call to remember and a call to repent mm -hmm. right I have a statement here that I wrote the other day it says, it says, and I shared it with you guys. It says, true repentance is never too late. And late repentance is seldom true. That was one of my Purit one of the Puritan quotes that I wrote down. It says the true it says true repentance is never too late, and late repentance is seldom true. You know, for that, you know, for what we you know, I mean that I think that statement right there speaks volume. <laughs> because it's true, you know. True repentance is never too late. You know, it's never too late to repent. But and but but late then it says late repentance is seldom true. In other words, you repent, but oh, in a sense, you're not really repenting. <laughs> right? Because we talked about a como se dice este, in Psalm 80, we talked about what does it mean to what does it mean? Uh, what does a revival mean? You know, we, we talk about we need a revival. We need go go back to the Reformation. You know, go back to Scripture. You know, we talked about that last uh, last week. <clears throat> what does that look like? You know, what does that look like in the Old Testament? What does a revival church look like in the Old Testament? And what is what is a a revival? church look like in the new testament you know we talked about that too we asked the question you know if, if god was to if i'm seeking the lord for a revival in my life what am i seeking for you know is it is it for our family to read start reading the word again <laughs> you know <clears throat> is it to go out and be, and you know be a witness for jesus you know i mean you know like i shared that last week i mean like if I'm asking God to revive me, I mean, is that, does that mean I want to go, out, you know, well, you know, but, you know, just think about it. When you first got saved, <laughs> how hungry were you for the Lord? On fire. You know, times didn't you share God's word <laughs> with people? You're on fire. I mean, that zeal and you were on fire, man. Yeah. You couldn't, you couldn't talk to someone without sharing Christ with them. Mm. But, uh, but a revival I think, I think I did share that with you guys. 
what, what, did it, what, what did that look like in the New Testament? And it was in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 42, right? Because they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. And the breaking of the bread. And in prayer. You know, these guys were on fire for prayer. Bro. They were prayer warriors. Always praying. Always seeking the Lord. And that's pretty much what the instruction here, what, what uh, Asaph has given us. He's, he's, tell, he's, he, he's uh, exhorting us. Asaph, Asaph is exhorting us here to stick <clears throat> to stick to him and to take, stick to his ways. Uh, be constant. <clears throat> be committed. And be loyal in your walk with the Lord. That's a word of exhortation here in Psalm 81. It says stick is to stick to him and to and to his and, and stick to his ways. Be constant, be consistent. I'm sorry, be consistent and be committed and be loyal in your walk with the Lord. Right? If you if you're consistent and you stick to him and you stick to his ways. You're constant in prayer, you're committed, and you're loyal to God, then your walk with the Lord will go a long way. Obey, obey, and be blessed. Follow his rules and commandments so that you do not for, forfeit the blessings he has promised. You know, I think sometimes we do forfeit the blessings. <clears throat> You know, when we for, we forfeit the blessings when when we do what we want. <laughs> I mean, well, I'll share a little bit what which verse is that, but it's right here in Psalm eighty one. Uh, but let's go ahead and start. Let's let's uh, take on Psalm eighty one, and I'll go a little bit more deeper into sharing on that <laughs> on that statement right there. Uh, but take us into that, Adolfo. Psalm okay. eighty one. Eighty one. Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout joyfully to the God of Jacob. Raise a son. Strike the tremble, the sweet sounding lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our feast day. For it is a stature for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. He established it for a testimony in Joseph when he went throughout the land of Egypt, I heard a language that I did not know. I believe his shoulder of the burden, his hands were freed from the basket. You called in trouble and I rescue you. I answer you in the hiding place of thunder. I prove you at the waters of Meribah, Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you will listen to me, let there be no strange God among you, nor shall you worship any foreign God. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. Verse 11. Wait a minute, ready? The Lord knows the thoughts of a man that they are futile. Blessed is a man whom you instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law. What you may give him rest from the days of your adversity until the pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not cast off his people, nor will he forsake his inheritance, but judgment will return to righteousness. And all the upright in heart will follow it. Who will rise up from me against the evildoers? Who will, stand, who will stand up for 
me against the workers of iniquity. Unless the Lord has been my help, my, my soul would soon have settled in silence. If I say my foot slips, your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. I think you got the wrong one, uh, Rick Randy. Huh? I think you got the wrong one. Yeah, we're in Psalm 81. Psalm 81, right? Yeah. 81, oh, 11. Oh, okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm on the wrong page, man. So how'd that happen? I had it on Psalm 81. All right, hey, here we go. But my people would not send, but my people would not heed my voice. And Israel would have none of me. So I gave them over to the own stubborn heart to walk in their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. They, the, the haters of the Lord would pretend submission to him, but their false, but their fate would endure forever. He would have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey from the rock of the rock, I would have satisfied you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the, um, you know, what you have from 11, 11, well, 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. You know, like we, like uh, Adolfo mentioned it earlier, <laughs> it's the rebellion of God's people, <clears throat> the rebellion of the people and God's discipline. Mm -hmm. Verses one to twelve is the primary reason for this oracle becomes clear that God's people had been unfaithful, and had been and had enacted discipline. So God gave them over. <clears throat> this is a reminder of our. Um, of our, of our, this is a reminder of our own reason to wonder, as well as a reminder of God's commitment to discipline those whom He loves in order to encourage repentance. And discipline to those who He loves in order to encourage repentance. Mm -hmm. God's people had been unfaithful and had enacted discipline. Um, you know, the people's resistance in obeying God led to their punishment. <clears throat> the root of their problem, the problem was their stubbornness. They wanted to follow their own ways and refuse to listen to God. I mean, uh, 1 Corinthians 3.19 says, right? <clears throat> the wisdom of the world is Foolishness before God. And um, I mean, if we cross reference that scripture right there, it's it's the um, you know, once again, they, they wanted to. Wait, what's what scripture? Oh, it was referencing one eleven and twelve, right? Mm -hmm. The rebellion of God, the rebellion of the people of of the the rebellion of the people and God's discipline. <clears throat> you know, when we rebel, I mean, God disciplines us. He He'll do whatever He can to bring us to repentance. Mm -hmm. He loves us. He disciplines. Those he loved, who he loves, in order to encourage repentance. I mean, think about it when God disciplines us, <laughs> right? In order to bring us to repentance. Mm -hmm. um, but the application is this as we consider the setting of this song, we are reminded 
of the temptation to to insincere worship. Here the people have gathered for this feast of praise and remembrance, but it's also made it clear that many of them had hearts that were far from God. In other words, they were just going because they were commanded to go, but their, their worship wasn't true. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, wasn't legit. You know, that's why verse 1 says, sing unto the Lord. Sing, it says, sing out loud. Mm -hmm. To God, our strength. In our right? yeah. And why is God our strength? You know, we gain strength from the Lord. I mean, I think of Psalm 31, 3, right? It says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, leave me and guide me. You know, we seek the Lord for strength and for wisdom and for, for provision. Um, it says, make a joyful shout to the, to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and strike the tremble. The pleasant harp with the, with the lute it says, blow the trumpet, right? Blow the shofar at the time of the new, of the new moon, at the full moon. Our solemn feast day. The um, once again, this is um, verses three to five reveal the setting of the psalm. The reference to the moon and the sounding of the trumpet connects this psalm to the feast of tabernacles. These verses were also reminders that God ordains and commands particular times and places for worship. In addition to daily. And, and and more spontaneous worship. In other words, the Lord wants your heart <laughs> to be in, in this worship. You know, he wants you to be committed. Mm -hmm. All in or forget it. And then, um, you know, that's why it's a reference to the to the moon. It says the references, the references to the moon and the sounding of the sh trumpets of the shofar connects to this. That's how this connects us to the, to the Feast of Tabernacles where I took you guys to. Um, and then we have a call to remember in verses 6 and 7. In verses 6 and 7, God reminds his people of all that he did in delivering them from Egypt and caring for them in the wilderness, this is a good reminder for us to for a reminder of a reminder to us of the importance of remembering our salvation and all the ways that God has been faithful to us. Right. Verse six and seven is there, if God reminds His people that all reminds reminds His people of all that He did in delivering them from Egypt and caring for them in the wilderness. Once again, this is a good reminder for us to, for reminder to us the importance of remembering our salvation and all the ways that God has been faithful to us. You know, if we remind us, we, if we re remember what God has done for us, it should bring us Remind us of our salvation and repentance. Oh, God. Oh, God has been good to us. You know, when it says admonish, here in, in, is it 10, I think? Um, where is it at? In reference to admonish, 8 through 10. It says here, verse 8, right? It says, hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you if you will listen to me. When it says admonish, meaning means that I will testify against you. And is that what your translation has, Adolfo? Mine, it says, let there be no strength. Uh, I mean, eight, hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you will listen to me. Right, so... Admonish, to admonish means I will testify against you. That's what admonish means. 
the Lord is saying, I, I, I will testify against you. That's why it says, um, in verses 8 through 10, means remember my law. Here we see a transition of God. A transition as, as God begins to, uh, to testify against them, against his people. It is clear that they had begun to forsake his law. In verses 8 through 10, he calls them to remember and to obey. He also adds to those who follow faithfully will be fully content and satisfied in him. Notice that. If we, if we will, if, if it says he also adds to those who follow faithfully will be, will be fully content and satisfied in him. Right? But uh, once again, it said it is clear that they had begun to forsake his law. And he calls them to remember and to obey. In verses 8 through 10. The... Uh, Verses one through one through two here is the heart of worship. One thing that 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 one thing that is emphasized here throughout the Psalms is that our love, our love and gratitude for God and His salvation should should reflect in our praise. The psalmist often calls for singing, and shouting, and even raised hands and dancing. I mean, first thing that comes to our mind is the David dance, right? <laughs> We think about dancing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it's the heart of worship in verses one, one and two. So the vineyard was doing it right then. Right? <laughs> <coughs> <clears throat> I mean, you know, like I said, you know, sometimes I watch the Jesus image church. I mean, their worship is like, it's long, bro. It's like yeah. over. I mean, it's maybe two hours. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But their worship is long. Um, but notice what the verse one says. Um, oh, verse two, it says, raise, verse two, right? Psalm 81, it says, raise a song and strike the tremble, the pleasant harp and the flute. So in other words, the, um, the instruments in our worship. Instruments in our worship are to raise songs of joy. That's why the instruments are to be used mm -hmm. or used in, in worship. And that's a reference to 1 Chronicles 15, 16. Sing out loud and make a joyful shout. The energy level of this psalm is to stimulate that of our that of other psalms, but the use of voices and instruments to praise God <clears throat> is a standard element of of joyful worship. The psalms, uh, but the First Chronicles fifteen verse sixteen, it's a reference to the instruments used in worship. Chronicles fifteen sixteen. You there? Yeah, I'm there. What does it say? The the Hibite, the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Arvidite, the Semurite, and the Hem one. Huh? I thought the one is verse 16. 16 and 17, right? First first uh first chronicles um 16. 16, yeah. I'm reading that. First Chronicles 15, 16. Yeah, 15, 16. Yeah. It, it says the Hippite and the Archite and the Sanite and the Arvidite and the Zemurite and the Hamathite. No, no. First, first, first Chronicles. First, the first 15. book of Chronicles. 
15, chapter 15, chapter verse 15, 16. Chapter 15, okay. You said 15 and 16, I was like, okay. So chapter 15, verse 16. Correct. Okay. Then David spoke to the leaders of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be the singers accompanied by instruments of music, stringed instruments, harps, and cymbals by raising the voice with surrounding joy. Yeah, that's the, that's the key verse right there. Mm -hmm. So we see there that the, the instruments were used, the purpose of the instruments are to raise songs of joy. Mm-hmm. It says the instruments of harps, cymbals, by raising the voice with sound <clears throat> joy. I mean, that's the reason for the instruments. <clears throat> yeah. In worship. To raise instruments of sounding joy. The, um, the other thing that we see here is that. Oh, here's my notes. <laughs> it says it says the two festivals in October, <clears throat> one of them, it says one one when the moon was very was one when the moon was was new, the other two weeks later when it was full. They are both in verse three. The second one is the festival of tents. Older Bibles may call it the food the feast of booths, and the others the feast of tabernacles. That's what I was referring to, and in, in the uh, as far as the uh, the fe the feasts, the um, verse eleven says, "Follow their own ideas," <clears throat> is an English way to say do whatever they think. Verses thirteen and fourteen suggest that following their own ideas had brought them trouble. This psalm does not say what the trouble was, but it does say that if they that if they obey God, the trouble would stop. God would make their enemies obey him. Verse 15, and be good to his people. I think that spoke volume. <laughs> That's why I highlighted this one. It says 13 and 14 suggest that following their own ideas had brought them trouble. The psalm does, this psalm does not say what the trouble was, but it does say that if they obeyed God, the trouble would stop. God would make their enemies obey him and be good to his people. And that's why I titled it, Obey God and Be Blessed. Why choose the path of pain and not the path of blessings? You know, for the same reason, Pedro Adolfo earlier, right? Because of our, because of rebellion. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and you know, and you know, and that's what the psalmist is bringing us here. He's bringing us to a call to remembrance. That's why I I, I titled it right here. I mean, I, I wrote this that the psalmist Asaph is the psalmist Asaph's word of exhortation is to is an encouragement to follow his ways and to and, and to receive deliverance. I mean, what are we seeking deliverance? The psalmist Asaph is, is a word of exhortation and encouragement is to follow his ways and receive deliverance. And that's where here verse 13 says, oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. <clears throat> I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. Right? So, verse 13 and 14 suggest that following their own ideas had brought them trouble. Once again, the psalm does not say that the, what the trouble was, but it does say that if they obey God, the trouble would stop. God would make their enemies obey him and be good to his people. <laughs> to walk in his ways means to do what God tells you to do. <laughs> I want my people to listen to me means that the same as I want Israel to walk in my ways.
the um, I think it's uh, oh here's my other note on the on the festivals. It says April. It says the Jew, the Jews had three big harvest times. April is when they picked barley. Is made to, they picked barley to make bread. May in the month of May they picked wheat also to make bread. And in October, they pick grapes to make wine. Mm. So there's the three, there's the three feasts. April, April is when they picked barley to make bread. May is when they picked wheat to make bread. October is when they pick grapes to make wine. Psalm 81 is a festival psalm. The festival was a time of the grape harvest. They called it the festival of tents. Tents were houses made with animal skins. At the festival of tents, Jews lived in lived lived in their tents for seven days. This taught them that how they lived when God took them out of Egypt hundreds of years before. I told them how good God was, how good God was to them. Psalm eighty one taught the Jews taught the Jews that now God had brought them into their own land and they should have no other gods before them. He would give them help from their enemies as he did in Egypt. Notice that. I think they keep, they keep those traditions up until today, right? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah, because I have a friend of mine that's, you know, he's Christian, but he follows the Jews, the kind of, they follow kind of like the Jewish festivals. Traditions, traditions. The traditions, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, verses one through four is, is the festival. <laughs> verses five through seven, what God did in Egypt. Verses eight through 16, trouble when you have other gods. <laughs> I think that speaks volume. Verses eight through 16, trouble when you have other gods. <laughs> and verses 1 through 4 Jacob is another name for Israel so God so God of Jacob means God of Israel I mean that sounds like a good title you know? uh -huh. trouble, trouble when you have other gods <laughs> um, the other thing that we see here is that You know, when I was talking to you guys about what does the Old Testament church look like in a revival? The old, the old, what would the Old Testament church look like? What does the what did the Old Testament church look like in a revival? Probably a lot of instruments. And they and they get lucky because they get to see God, right? No, the old the old testament. I mean, when we're talking about a revival, and it kind of like similar, it, it's a similar to the festival of booths here in the tabernacles, festival of tabernacles. But it, it talks about Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. in Nehemiah chapter eight. In Nehemiah chapter eight, it says they were united. How many times throughout the passage we're told that all the people or the words to to the effect, did this or that. No fewer than 10 times, the solitary people is highlighted. They were also zealous, eager, passionate, hungry, thirsty for God. And his will is revealed in scripture. They were, wor they, they were worshipers too. Um, and also in Nehemiah chapter 9, where the people confessed their sins, their own sins, also the iniquities of their fathers. But notice verse 8, that they wept over their sins as they heard the words of the law, read and taught. The people also exercised conviction. Let's read that. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 8 and 9. I think those are two good chapters, man. <laughs> right. I think that's that goes with our study. Both chapters? Eight and nine is, is a good chapter. Eight and nine of, of, um, of, of uh, wait a minute. Yeah, you got? 
the um Nehemiah what? Nehemiah nine, but let's do let's do Ezra eight and then we'll go to Nehemiah nine. Ezra eight. Ezra, Ezra, Ezra chapter eight. Because we have Ezra first before we have Nehemiah. And I know we went through this study. I just didn't get my notes on it, but I go, these are two good chapters to, to know whatever to to um, to get an idea of what the revival looks in the Old Testament. Because I think we did that one last week. We, last week we did uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 42, right? Take us into that, Adolfo. Ezra. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, no, wait, wait. No, that's two. Ezra eight. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on a minute. Hang on. I said, I said Ezra, right? Yeah. Yeah, Ezra eight. Ezra eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, correct. Okay. Now these are the heads of the fathers, his households, and the genealogical enrollment of those who went up with me from Babylon in the reign of the king Artaxerxes, of the sons of the Pinias, Gerson, and of the sons of Itamar, Daniel, the sons of David, Aturush, and the sons of Zechariah, who was of the sons of Parosh, Zechariah, and with him 150 males who were in the genealogical list of the sons of Pahat Moab, Elitanei, the, the son of Sarah, and 200 males with him. Of the sons of Satu, Zechariah, the sons of Hathiel, and 300 males with him. And of the sons of Adin, Ebed, and the sons of Jonathan, and 50 males with him. And of the sons of Elam, Heshaha, and the sons of Ataliah, and 70 males with him. And of the sons of Sephathiah, Sephathiah, the sons of Michael and 80 males with him, of the sons of Joab, Obadiah, and the sons of Hechiel, and 218 males with him, and of the sons of Bani, Shelomith, the sons of Hoshipiah, and 160 males with him, and of the sons of Bibai, Zechariah, the sons of Bibai, and, male, and 28 males with him. And of the sons of Asgad, Joachan, jo the son of Hakanan, Hakatan, and a hundred and ten males with him. And the sons of Adonikam, the last ones, those being their names, Elipelet, Hewel, and Seth Maniah, and sixty males with them. And of the sons of Big by Utai and Sabud and 70 males with them. 15. Now I assemble them at the river that runs to Abba, where we camped for three days. And when I observed the people and the priests, I did not find any Levites there. So I sent for Eliezer, Ariel, Semiah, El Nathan, Hadiv, El Nathan, Nathan, Zechariah, and Mashulam, leading men, and for Hoai Riv, and El Nathan teachers. I send them to Idol, the leading men at the place Casipia, and I told them what to say to Idol and his brothers. Oh. Hang on a minute. Hang on, hang on a minute with them, please. Okay. 
No, let's go to Nehemiah chapter 8. I'm sorry. Nehemiah chapter 8. Yeah, because it's. Yeah. It's in, in all the people, yeah, in all the people gather as one man at the square which was in the front of the water gate, and they asked Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Then Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men, women, and all who could listen with understanding. In the first day of the seventh month, he read from it before the square, which was in the front of the water gate, from early morning until midway, in the presence of men and women, those who could understand. And all the people were attentive to the book of the law. Ezra, the scribe, stood at the wooden meet, uh, podium which they had man made for the purpose. For, that, for, for the purpose, and besides him stood Metitiaha, Sima, Ananiah, Uriah, Hilkiah, and Mesai, Ah, in his right hand. And Bedaiah, Mishael, Ilkaiah, Hashum, Hashbatanah, Serayah, and Meshulam of his left hand. Ezra opened the book at the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the peoples. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord. Hang on. Give, give, it, give it to Big Randy. Okay. Nehemiah 8. No, Nehemiah, uh, yeah, 8, verse 6. Verse 6. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. Then all the people answered, Amen and Amen, while lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also, Joshua, Bonnie, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, uh, Akub, 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 Shabbatai, Hadijah, 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 Masira, Kalila, Assyria, Josabad, Hanan, Padiah, and the Levites helped the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. Keep going. Uh, yeah. So they, so they read distinctly from the book in the law of God, and they gave. And so they gave they gave the sense <clears throat> and helped them to understand read the reading, right? Are you in the, yeah, I lost my place. You're in verse nine. You just verse read, eight. You verse just eight. read so they read distinctly from the book in the law of God and they gave the sense and helped them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra and Ezra, the priest and the scribes and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, Thus this day is holy to the to the Lord your God. Do not mourn nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, go your way and eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those who, to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites quieted all the people saying, be still for the day of the holy for the day is holy, do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and ask, drink, to send portions and rejoice greatly because they 
understood the words that were declared to them. I mean, that right there, those verses right there speak volume. <laughs> yeah, it's coming downhill. I mean, right here, verses 1 through one through 12, it speaks volume. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? You know, it says that they, it says that they wept over their sins as they heard the, as they heard the words of the law, read and, and so the Levites, the Levites <clears throat> were able to, to, um, to help them in understanding and reading, right? Verse eight, yep. right? It says, so they distinctively from the book in the law of God, as they gave the sense and helped them to understand the reading. Hmm. They gave sense and helped them to understand. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, go ahead. Keep, uh, 13. Hermano Adolfo. Then on the second day, the heads of the fathers, households of all the people, the priests and the Levites were gathered to Ezra, the scribe, that they might gain insight into the world, the words of the law. They found written in the law how the Lord had commanded through Moses that the sons of Israel should live in booths during the feast of the seventh month. So they proclaimed and circum cir circulated a proclamation in all their cities in, in, in Jerusalem saying, go out to the hills and bring olive branches and wild olive branches, middle branches, palm branches and branches of other leafy trees to make boots as it is written. So the people went out and brought them and made boots for themselves each on his roof and on their courts and on their courts of the house of God and in the square of the water gate and in the square at the gate of Ephraim. Verse 17. Uh, go ahead, Big Randy. What verse? Uh, verse 17. 17. So the whole assembly of those who had return from the captivity made booths and sat under the booths the booth for since the days of Joshua the son of Nun until the day the children of Israel had not done so and there was very great gladness also, day by day, from the first day until the last day, he read from the book of the law on the tenth, uh, on the eighth day, there was a sacred assembly according to the prescribed manner. I mean, look at that. I mean, there you have the tabernacle, the Feast of Tabernacles. Mm -hmm. And it begins in verse 14. It says, and they found written in the in the law, which the Lord commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths during the feast of the seventh month. Mm -hmm. So once again, they dwelt in booths to remember how God provided for them those 40, 40 years. You see that? You see how we connect that? <laughs> the, um, once again, <clears throat> that they should, verse 15, right? That they should announce and proclaim in all their cities in Jerusalem, saying, go to the court, go to the mountains and bring olive branches, branches of olive trees, myrtle branches, palm branches, Branches of leafy trees to make booths as, as, as it is written. Right? And we read that. We read that in Deuteronomy 16, 13. 
<clears throat> that was the Feast of Tabernacles. Mm -hmm. You know, it says that, um, it says they were instructed to celebrate, and they did. <clears throat> and how did they celebrate? Just as God prescribed it. They kept the feast, they kept the festival of booths, the festival of and gathering, signifying their identity as pilgrims living in, in temporary housing with God, their provider, but anticipating their permanent home with him in the in the um, in the promised land. <laughs> So, you know, this is what the church, this is what the revival looks like in the Old Testament church. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Is God able to revive our churches? Is God able to revive, mm -hmm. you know? Think, where would we be at? <clears throat> Verse five, right? <clears throat> Nehemiah chapter eight, right? It says, and Ezra opened the book Open the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Mm -hmm. Remember, Pastor Chuck used to do that. <laughs> he said, "Stand for the reading of the for for the for prayer for the reading of the word of God." That's because it was written that when the book was read, they were to stand up in reverence of God. That's why it says right here. It says, and and Ezra opened up the and and Ezra opened up the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above the people. And when he opened the book, when he opened it, all the people stood up. Verse six says, and Ezra blessed the Lord, the God, the great God. Then all the people answered and said, Amen, Amen, while lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Mm -hmm. Notice that. I mean, that speaks volume right there. Verse 3 says, uh, take verse 3. Number 8. Yeah, yeah. Verse 8, number 3. Eight, verse 8, 3. Yes, he, he says he read from it before the square which was in front of the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of men and women, those who could understand. And all the people were attentive to the book of the law. Notice that. From the morning until midday, for six hours. Think about that. Hmm. They gave heed to the word of God for six hours. They kept their focus on Ezra and the reading. They were, they were so hungry and eager to hear the word. They were so hungry and eager to hear the word. Wow. Notice that. They gave heed to the word of God. For six hours, they kept their focus on Ezra and the reading of God's word. And what happens? And what happens today? No, pues el, el alo se nos duerme. No, just kidding. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> but that's that's what a, that's what a new, that's what a uh, Old Testament church revival looks like. So they were so hungry and eager to hear the word. That's what a that's what a revival or a reform by reform reformation looks like in the old testament. And you know, like Adolfo just read, it says, Who could understand? It says, it says for the for it says before men and women and those who could understand. The ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. Attentive. <clears throat> I mean, that right there speaks volumes. 
you know, but God commands them to, to celebrate. Verse 10 says, Let's quit this fireworks. <laughs> it says, then he, then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet. Send portions to those from whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to the Lord, to, to holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Notice that. But notice, notice what they're eating. Notice what it says. You know, what, what Randy says, you know, I want the prime rib. <laughs> I mean, they're not eating healthy here, bro. They're eating their, I mean, they're eating porterhouse steaks here. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 10 again. It says, it says, then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat. Notice the fat that's on the meat. Drink the sweet and send portions to those whom, whom send, send portions to those from whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our God. Do not sorrow for the joy of the Lord is your strength. You know, but the people kept grieving <clears throat> because the word of God, you know, not only brought conviction, but it brought 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 him great joy. Notice that six hours they were attentive to the Lord, to the reading of the God's word. They were hungry, eager to hear the word of God. You know, he tells them twice in verse nine. Verse nine, it tells them again, "Do not mourn." Right, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn nor nor weep, for all the people wept. When they heard the words of the law. Notice what conviction. That's verse 9. Right? Um, you know, because of their apostasy, bro. The turning titles, turning to other gods. It just, you know. Verse 9, right? Take it, read verse 9 again, another one. Yeah, then Nehemiah, who was the governor in Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people were weeping <clears throat> when they heard the words of the law. Notice that. I mean, that speaks volume right there, bro. Yeah. They were, they were zealous, eager, passionate, hungry, thirsty for God and his will as revealed in scripture. They were, they were, they were worshipful, worshipful too. Um, pero I mean, that'll, that'll take us to uh, verse 9. But um, the, um, I mean, we could take a read on that. Uh, verse 9, right? It's right? the Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 9. Uh, verses uh, five through nine. I think this is one of the worship songs that we hear. <laughs> uh, take take a read on that. Be ready. Nehemiah nine. Uh, Nehemiah nine verse five. I mean, just the five. Just the verse five alone is is a long. It's a long verse. Take a read on that. Eight verse five. Uh, nine verse five. 
Okay. Um, I mean, you can start with Stan. Yes. Um, yes. Um, bless alone. Oh, alone. What is. Um, no, no, Nehemiah 9. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 1. No, verse 5. Verse 5, okay. Verse 5 through um, through 8. Get someone else to read it, please. Okay. Well, well don't forget it. My brother. Then the Levites, Heshua, Gatmiel, Bani, Hashab, Neayah, Serebayah, Fodayah, Shebaniah, and Patanayah said, Arise, bless the Lord your God forever and ever. Oh, may your glorious name be blessed and exalted above all the blessings and praise. You alone are the Lord. You have made the heavens, the heavens of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to all of them, and the heavenly hosts bow down before you. You are the Lord God who chose Abram and brought him out from Ur of the Chaldeans and gave him the name Abraham. You found his heart faithful before you and made a covenant with him to give him the land of the Canaanite, of the Hittite and the Amorite, of the Parasite, the Hebusite, and the Gargasite to give it to the descendants, and you have fulfilled your promise, for you are righteous. I mean, that those verses speak volume. <laughs> Notice that <clears throat> Kamala Kadolfo just read, right? It says, Stand up and bless the Lord your God forever and ever. Blessed be your glorious name, which is exalted above the blessings. Above all blessings and praise, you alone, you alone are the Lord. <clears throat> I mean, you made the heaven, you had made the heaven and you and the heavens of heavens with all your host. I mean, that's a good verse right there. Those those two verses are good verses. Um, you know, uh, uh this they are called to worship. The um you know what we're talking about is a a, a revival. It says when a, when a revival comes to the congregation of God's church, what does that re, what does that revival look like? Mm. To put it differently, when God renews or revives His church, what does that revival look like? Would we recognize it if it happened to our congregation? Would you recognize it if it happened in your family? In you personally, historically. We think of a revival in the 16th century. We think of extraordinary sovereign work of God through his king, according to his word, and to his own glory, manifested and increased holiness, uh, decreased worldliness in thought, in word, in deed among God's church, and usually increased in civil righteousness. Among non-Christians, though, increased fear, of God in their hearts. So what will a revival look like if and when God brings it to us today? As a framework for answering the question, we look at the uh, what the revival looked like in the Old Testament church. That's why we went to Nehemiah, and that's why we went to Ezra. In Nehemiah and Ezra, in Ezra's day, and we analyze what happened from various valid angles to consider first what the people what what the people as a whole did when the reformation came in the old testament you know that's why i took you guys to those two chapters and we just read <laughs> what happened <laughs> ezra stood up and he read 
the book of the law. It brought tears, it brought conviction, it brought joy. Right? Um, but think about it. <clears throat> what would God do? What, what would it look like in a revival in our family? <laughs> in our own personal family? In your family? In you personally? Um, I mean, that's why I was just sharing with you on that one. Sharing with you guys on that. Um, este, besides that, that's pretty much all I got. <laughs> um, I just wanted to share on that. What the revival church would look like. And here on Psalm 81. You know, the shouts of joy. The um, and heeding to God's voice. Right. <clears throat> the. Um, you know, like I said, the words of expectation is that. The words of expectation is this. Is that. Um, the psalmist Asa's word of expectation is to encourage. Is, is an exhortation, and it exhortation is an encouragement to follow his ways and receive deliverance. Amen. The Israelites weren't listening to God in the wilderness, and they weren't listening to the prophets whom the Lord sent their way. You know, but once again, it says, why choose the path of pain and not the path of blessings? Deuteronomy 30, 19. It says, because we can't, because we can't fight the Lord over the things that really don't matter to us. You know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, como se dice este, we shouldn't sacrifice, a man should not sacrifice what he does not esteem. Right, but we know that God's going to chasten us to bring us to that point of of repentance, right? Like I said, the majority of this psalm is a call for the people to remember their God and to repent of their unfaithfulness. So may God give us that faithfulness. And continue to chase in us until we repent. Amen. We'll go ahead and close. The um, um, we'll go ahead and pray out. Amen. So, Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, for giving us uh, Psalm eighty-one to obey God and be blessed. Why choose the path of pain and not the path of blessings? So, Lord, thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for the words of exhortation, Father. Lord, we pray that uh, you would continue to exhort us, to rebuke us, like you did to the children of Israel, Father. To follow your ways and to receive deliverance, Father. That's our prayer. And Lord. Thank you once again. We pray for those who are sick and bound. Lord, that you would raise them up, Lord God. I pray Romans 8, 15. You're not giving us a spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption to whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Abba, Father, we pray that you would make a way where it doesn't seem to be no way, Father God. And Lord, I pray Psalm 910. It says, those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Psalm 25, 3. Indeed, none of those who know your name will be put to shame. So God, I just pray for all the people that are listening here, Father, that you would just, uh, Lord, at the sound of my voice, Father, that you would just meet them where they're at. Lord, that you would heal them, Father God. I pray God's kindness and I pray God's mercy over your life, over your familia's life. And we pray for that uh, revival. Lord, that you would revive us, revive our personal lives, Lord, revive our familia. Lord, to go back, to reading of your word, studying of your word. Lord, give us that zeal 
Bring back that zeal, Father God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Right, man of God? Mm-hmm. Call it a night. <laughs> you working tomorrow? No? Okay, guys. Have a good night. Yeah.